Hi, Julian Niblett, Australia's ambassador to Ethiopia. I hope you're enjoying the Paris 2024 Olympics as much as I am. They've been fantastic. I also hope you have the chance to listen to part one of my interview with Ethiopia's Haile Gebre Selassie. I'd now like to encourage you to listen to part two. Thank you. So how did you feel at the end of the, of the, of the race? Did you feel relief? Do you feel joy? Do you feel exhaustion? How did you feel? You know, if I became second or third or uh, somewhere uh, behind, the, feel, the feeling should be, must be, very exhausting. Yep. And uh, collapsing. Yeah. Many things, really. Yeah. But I don't understand the, ne the energy where it comes from. It came from, you know, the time when I finished the line. It's me. Couldn't believe it. You talk about the mood of the crowd. Who else was running that night? You know, that evening, uh, it was the, one of the best athletics ever. Cutting Freeman, uh, especially many Australians wanted to see the Katim Freeman winning. Yes, she did. With the full tie. Yes. I remember that. Amazing. And uh, I myself, that, re I mean, of course, uh, the capacity of the uh, stadium, maybe 100,000, I don't, I don't remember. But the announcement, what they know, uh, written in the board, 112,500 spectators. Mm -hmm. How come that? Well, uh, how many seats? Uh, maybe some of them, you know, were you know, sitting around, of course, watching, you know, not only Haile Gabriselase, of course, don't forget, I mean, the, one of the biggest uh, crowd uh, came uh, for uh, Katim Foyman. Yes. Uh, she was really, uh, plus, you know, the torch for uh, Olympic torch. That's right, yes. She was uh, really, really, if you ask me one of the best memory in my life in athletics career uh, for Sydney. That's, that's great, that's wonderful. Amazing. Can you tell me a little bit about how training techniques have changed since the Sydney 2000 Olympics? Here in Ethiopia you produce some amazing distance runners. Many, many, many people are very successful in international um, events. How has training changed over the years? Uh, training changes a lot nowadays. Mm. You don't believe it. One of the reasons why we started you know, the Great Ethiopia are now 24 years this year. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons how to produce you know, more Ethiopian athletes, mm -hmm. more athletes. So after Sydney, how many Ethiopian? Thousand. In terms of tactic, in terms of uh, numbers, in terms of uh, gender. Uh, uh, of course, uh, used to be men athlete now mm. it's um, many women mm. and, and uh, the tactic uh, as you ask i mean as you as you said uh, my tactic it's an old uh, old fashion okay it is it's normal of course uh, uh, model uh, 2000 uh, car uh, it's not faster than model 2020 or 24 <laughs> And uh, at the same time, now um, our athletes more uh, smarter, mm -hmm. uh, technology, especially mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, the shoes what they have. It's all about the shoes? Oh my gosh. Not only, I mean, the shoes is a technology amazing. If you ask me who was the, the, the true, the true uh, sportsman, who ran without any technology, any support, mm -hmm. was a baby in 1960. Oh, of course, at the Royal Olympics. Yes, after that, even Abebe Bikila in 1964, he ran with the shoes. Mm. Since, since, you uh, know, 1960, what happened? Every year is a new technology, a yep. new uh, system of training, uh, yep. program of training. And uh, uh, some of them, maybe they don't need, you know, just uh, sweating, you know, the whole day. And maybe my time, you know, we, our training used to be like uh, between life and death. Yes. Now, very tactful, easy one, smarter, something like that. Please. Harley, thank you so much for your reflections on your time at the Sydney 2000 Olympics. 
for some of us it feels like only yesterday. I do remember that night and it was such a wonderful uh, yeah. night um, of achievements. But thank you so much for sharing your reflections and your memories. It's terrific. Thank you. Thank you very much.